Hey everybody, welcome to the deep dive. Uh, today we're gonna be taking a look at some uh, manipulation tactics. You know, the kind of stuff that leaves you feeling kind of icky, but you can't quite put your finger on why. It's like, yeah. you know that feeling when you get off the subway and realize you've been pickpocketed? Exactly, it's subtle, it's sneaky, and it leaves you feeling powerless. But like a good subway map, we're gonna give you the tools to navigate this tricky terrain. Yeah, we're gonna arm you with the knowledge you need to spot these manipulators before they even get close. So, think of this as your Street Smart Survival Guide, Urban Edition. Let's kick things off with a classic. The Guilt Bomb Dropper. You know the type. That friend who always conveniently forgets their wallet. Oh yeah. The master of making you responsible for their feelings. It's not about taking responsibility, it's about twisting that guilt knot until you cave. Right, and they'll hit you with those lines like, uh, Oh man, I guess I'm just a burden, huh? With that sigh that could power a small village. Pure theatrics. But the good news is, you don't have to buy a ticket to their guilt trip. Okay, so how do we uh, dodge this emotional shrapnel? Here's the move. We call it detonate and redirect. Acknowledge their feelings, briefly. Like, I see you're frustrated, but... Right, keep it short and sweet. Exactly. Then shift the focus. Boom, no problem. I'll wait until you can get me back. It's like saying, I see your guilt trip, but I'm taking the express train out of here. <laughs> All right. Next up, we have the I never said that Houdini. Poof, your agreement vanishes like a cheap magic trick. This is where things get tricky, you see, because they're playing with your sense of reality. This is gaslighting, right? Exactly. They make you doubt your own memory, your own sanity. Okay, for our listeners who might not be familiar with that term, can you give us an example? Sure. Imagine you and a friend agree to meet at, say, 7 o'clock. Later, they insist it was 8. You start questioning if time even exists anymore. So they're messing with the very fabric of reality. That's the danger. That's why it's so important to stay grounded. Okay, but how do we do that when someone's trying to rewrite history? My advice. Keep receipts. Now, I don't mean literally collecting those little slips of paper. I mean document agreements. Send a quick text like, just confirming our chat, meeting at 7. Digital paper trail. Mm. So next time a colleague tries to bail on covering your shift, bam, send that reminder. No more memory games. <laughs> Speaking of confusing communication, let's talk about the passive-aggressive Picasso. They're all about backhanded compliments and those silences that could freeze hell over. Yeah, passive aggression is anger in disguise, yeah. right? Instead of speaking up, they drop these little hints, simmering with resentment. Like, oh, no worries, I'll just handle everything myself again, you know, with that sigh that says a thousand words. You got it. They want you to feel guilty without actually confronting you. So how do we deal with these masters of the silent treatment? It's time to name the game, address their behavior directly, but keep it cool, like you're asking for the time, not filing a police report. Hey, is there something you want to talk about? I'm all for open communication. Exactly. Straightforward and chill, let them know you're not playing their game. All right, I'm loving this. Good, because we're just getting started. So we've decoded the guilt bomb dropper, learned to outsmart the I never said that Houdini, and even called out the passive aggressive Picasso. But our urban jungle adventure, it doesn't stop there. Oh no. <laughs> Next up, we've got the drama magnet. This is the person whose life is like a never ending soap opera. And you're always cast as the, uh, what is it? The reluctant hero. Exactly. Always ready for that rescue mission. And they're masters of that whole, my life is falling apart monologue. Right. Hoping you'll jump in and save the day. Right. They're all about attention and sympathy. And while it's important to be, you know, compassionate, you don't want to get pulled into that vortex of drama. It's like they're offering you front row seats to their emotional roller coaster, but you never even bought a ticket. Exactly. So the key here is to offer support, but without getting completely swept up in their chaos. Okay. So how do we do that? How do we, uh, Set those boundaries without being a total jerk. Here's where sympathize and set boundaries comes in. So you offer a listening ear, right? But you don't jump in to fix all their problems. Right. So when that coworker starts complaining again about being, you know, totally swamped, what do I know? It's short and sweet. Like a quick coffee break, you could say something like, sounds rough. I hope it gets better soon. Got it. Acknowledge, offer support, but don't enlist in their drama army. Okay. That makes sense. Oh. Speaking of uh, unpredictable behavior, reminds me of another type, the hot and cold weather forecaster. Sunshine and rainbows one minute, ghosting you the next. Ah, uh, yes, the master of mixed signals. They just love keeping you on your toes, you know. <laughs> Makes them feel in control. It's like driving in rush hour with your eyes closed. 
terrifying. Pretty much. They pull you in close, then push you away, and you're left wondering, what did I do wrong? Oh, it's glossy. So how do we handle this emotional whiplash? Stay consistent, my friend. No matter their mood, respond calmly. Don't let their roller coaster dictate your emotional weather. Don't chase after them when they're distant. And don't get swept away when they're all over you. Stay grounded like a skyscraper in an earthquake. Okay, these analogies are gold. Our listeners are getting a full-on urban survival guide. That's the plan. Okay, we've got time for one more before we gotta uh, take a quick break. Let's do it. Let's talk about the one that can really mess with your head. The master gaslighter. Big topic. Right, we did touch on it before, but this one deserves a little more attention. The gaslighter, they're all about distortion. Yeah. Making you question your own sanity. It's like they're trying to swap out your internal GPS for a broken one that only leads to them. You got it. And it can be so damaging to your self-esteem, your mental well-being. It's not a joke. So how do we protect ourselves from this, this mental ninja? What are the tools? Okay, first things first. Trust your gut. If something feels wrong, it probably is. Don't let them convince you you're imagining things. Right. And it helps to have, like... A reality check, buddy. Exactly. Yeah. Someone you trust who can validate your experience. Love that reality check, buddy. Okay, so let's say they deny something that, you know, you know happened. Like, they claim they never agreed to something you discussed. What then? Don't get sucked into a battle you can't win. State your truth and leave it at that. A simple, interesting, maybe we remember it differently does the trick. No need to get their approval for your own memories, right? Right. All right, we're back for the final stretch of our urban manipulation deep dive. So far, we've met those guilt-tripping pros, the memory manipulators, even those silent treatment champions. Right. We've learned to deflect those guilt bombs, keep receipts, and call out passive aggression like it's nothing. But we're not done yet. There's one more manipulator we got to tackle. The one who treats your boundaries like a suggestion box. The uh, boundary bender. These are the folks who act like personal space is a myth. Borrowing without asking, popping in unannounced favors galore, but when it's their turn, crickets. It's like they think your life is a 24-7 open house, <laughs> and they've got the spare key. Yeah, and if you don't set clear boundaries, well, they'll just keep pushing until they've basically moved in, baggage and all. So how do we put up those keep out signs without, you know, sounding like a grumpy landlord? Assertiveness is key, but not aggression. Think of it like this. You're not building a wall, you're installing a gate. You decide who comes in and when. Okay, I like that. Gate metaphor. Controlled access, not total lockdown. So let's say we have that friend who's always inviting themselves over. No warning, just shows up. Easy. Next time they try that, hit them with a polite but firm, hey, I'd love to see you, but a little heads up would be great. Maybe we plan something for, like, next week. Nice. Clear boundary, no drama. I like it. Exactly. And remember, setting boundaries isn't about being mean or controlling. It's about respecting yourself, your time, your space. So, big takeaway from our deep dive today. We've learned to spot all kinds of manipulators lurking in that urban jungle. Right. But the real power comes from knowing what to do about it. Say no, set boundaries, and don't be afraid to walk away from anything that drains your energy. I have said it better myself. And hey, if you're ever feeling lost in that concrete jungle, remember, there are people who can help you navigate. Therapists, friends, family. Don't be afraid to reach out. All right, folks, that wraps up our deep dive into the art of manipulator spotting. Stay sharp, trust your gut, and don't let anyone bell your sparkle. See you on the next one.